Okay, so let's look at how to code uh, assembly language. So first of all, you need to understand the problem. And uh, until you're comfortable with assembly and perhaps even afterwards, it's nice to write out your solution in something familiar like English or a flowchart or pseudocode or Java, C, Ruby, uh, whatever. The pseudocode really, really doesn't matter. Then translate it to assembler. So let's look at uh, you know three kinds of tasks we could do in uh, you know assembler or whatever. Um, there's the sequential task, the conditional tasks, and iterative tasks. So let's look at all these different types here. So let's the first one. Let's look at is the if then else statement we have over here on the right. A uh, C if then else, you know, if the variable buzzer on is uh, equal to 1, and you want to pulse the buzzer, turn on the LED, else turn off the LED. So how would we do that in assembler? So basically here is the, the assembler program that does that. So the first of all, it, it does a word compare with 1 and buzzer on. And it, it jumps not equal to my else. So my else is basically, if the buzzer isn't one, uh, then we're jumping down to else. So my else is like going into the else part of the loop. And if we're in the else part of the loop, we turn off the LED. And in this case, we clear um, um, pin 2 of P1 out, uh, port, uh, you know, pin 2 of P1 out. So that would basically turn off the LED. So then uh, if, if it's um, not equal, but if it is equal, we want to uh, pulse the buzzer, which means we're going to XOR um, P4 out because the buzzer is on P4, and uh, and we're going to do that, and then we're going to uh, set the LED on, so you can see that, and then we jumped to my next because you know if you do the if part, you don't want to do the else part, so let's jump over the my else part. So here's a switch statement, a switch slash k statement in C. If you look at it over here on the right, we have the switch. It's switching on my byte. It checks to see whether my byte is uh, equal to dot colon. If it is, it uh, executes a subroutine do dot, uh, and then it breaks. Uh, or in the case it's uh, equal to dash, it uh, executes do dash and breaks. And, uh, and if it wasn't either of those, it hits the default. So how would we do that in assembler? So first of all, we compare uh, immediate dot with my byte. So that's basically doing the, you know, the comparison there. We jump not equal to SW01. So SW01 is now the, the next case where we compare dash to my byte. And if, if it's... Um, not equal to dash, then we jump to default. If it is equal to dash, then we go down and then we call do dash, uh, and then we jump to SW end when we're done, basically, to get out of this. Uh, um. So that's uh, an example of how to translate a C uh, case statement into assembly. Let's look at a for loop. So here's a for loop in C. On the right, we have the integer i declared at the top, and then we have the for loop for i equals 0 as long as it's less than 10. You know, go through this loop and keep incrementing i each time until it hits 10. And in the loop it uh, calls four subroutines, do dot, delay, do dash, and delay. So how to do that in assembly is this. First of all, we do a dot bss i and 2, and basically what that does is that sets aside the uh, two uh, bytes for i, so we can have uh, space for a variable to use in memory. And, uh, and that will be in RAM because we're going to be changing that all the time. And so then we, uh, we move 0 into i. That's uh, the i equals 0 part of the for loop. We have to start out at 0. And then we have a label for check. So now we do a check and see whether i is equal to 10. If it is, uh, if it's greater than or equal to, we jump down to four done. Otherwise, we um, call do dot delay do dash delay, and then we add one to i. You know, add dot w. You could also inc 
i, you know, and that would uh, um, use that pseudo instruction. It would uh, maybe be a little easier to read. Then we jump back to the four check, and we keep doing that until finally i gets up to ten, in which case uh, we go down to the four done. So that's how you do a for loop in assembler. So let's look at a while loop. How do we do a while loop? Over here on the right we have the C while loop. We're defining true equals one, and we uh, have an integer blink equals true. And uh, we do while blink, and then we do these uh, four subroutine calls. And I'm assuming that blink would be something that, that was uh, changed by an uh, interrupt routine or something. So how do we do that in assembler? So first of all, um, we uh, equate true to one. So that's basically saying true and one are the same thing. You know, you can use them interchangeably. Then we set aside uh, two uh, bytes or one word for blink. That's a variable, and that's going to be in RAM. And then we uh, we move um, true into blink. And you move immediate true into blink. So we're basically um, setting blink equal to true, that's uh, you know, the initialization you saw up on top. Then we have our while loop, and we put a uh, label there, labeling it such. First thing in the while loop is you compare um, blink to zero, and you jump if they're equal, and uh, that would get out of the uh, while loop, jump down to while done. If they're not equal, then you uh, call these uh, sub, uh, subroutines, and at the end you jump back to while loop. So it keeps going through the loop until finally blink changes to a zero. So here's a uh, quiz for you. Code the following C program in assembler.